The life and the works of Imam Ibn Majah. And Ibn Majah, he's the fourth of the four great writers of the Sunnah and collectors of the Sunnah. Muhammad ibn Yazid and his kunya was Abi Abdullah and he was from a place called Al Qazwin. Al Qazwin, which is an area in Iraq, the eastern side of Iraq. And Abu Abdullah, Muhammad ibn Yazid, Al Qazwini ibn Majah, was born in the year 209 Hijri, about the year 824 uh, in the Gregorian calendar. This city is one of those cities which was conquered in the early part of the Khilaf of Sayyidina Uthman anhu. Sayyidina Uthman made Al-Barra ibn Azib the great companion of the Prophet and after that Al-Qazween always remained a Muslim city. Over a period of time conquerors would come and they would settle in Qazween and as a result of that the Arabic language became the language of the people and also within a very short space of time it became a center of learning. So Ibn Majah, his life and his learning was an environment of knowledge. All around him he was surrounded by knowledge. And after he sought the knowledge which was in his city and he had memorized what was there very quickly at a very young age, at the age of 18 only, he decided to travel elsewhere. Undertook 15 arduous years learning and collecting the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. He will have studied with the greatest scholars. Some of them like Ibrahim ibn al-Mundir al-Khurami. He was the student of Imam al-Bukhari. So these were some of the greatest scholars of the time. Not only did he seek knowledge from them, but just to be in the presence of people like that, we would boast. So for 15 years, Imam Ibn Majah collected this knowledge until eventually he amassed this knowledge and he returned back to his city. And when he returned back to his city, he began to teach. And not only did he begin to teach, of course, he had to, this is the reason we have so many students. We didn't mention them. Ibrahim Ibn Dinar, al jarashi Saeed Ibn Abdullah, al ghadani Ahmed Ibn Ibrahim, al qazwini Jafar Ibn Idris, and many, many others. Not only did he have many students because he was teaching, but also he wrote many books. And there are three books which all of the writers of his seerah mention. That he wrote three amazing books. One of them is the tafsir of the Qur'an. None of us probably know that he wrote a tafsir of the Qur'an. Why? Because today it is lost. We didn't preserve the inheritance from our forefathers, our ulama, we didn't preserve that. And so it was lost. The only one of the greatest books that he wrote that remains with us is his Sunan, Sunan ibn Majah. We want to discuss something about this book and its status in the sight of the scholars and also its methodology in this book. The ulama considered Sunan ibn Majah one of the four books of Sunan. So which books do we referring to? Bukhari and Muslim are known as Sahihain. The two authentic books. Why are they called Sahihain? Because the authors of those books, they had a condition that everything that they would collect within that book would be authentic. As far as the other four books, which are the, known as the Sunnah al-Arba, Sunnah Abi Dawood, Sunnah al-Tirmidhi, Sunnah al-Nasai, and Sunnah ibn Majah. These are the Sunan. What we find is that first of all, the authors of these books didn't put a condition down that everything that they would collect would be authentic. So Imam al Dhahabi makes ishara to this fact. He says the book of Abi Abdullah ibn Majah is a very good book. If only there were some of these narrations which were spurious, if they had not murkied the water, if they had not spoiled this book. And then he says, adding to it, there were not that many. 
So the Sunan of Ibn Majah is a very important addition to the Kutub al Sitta. And they, were, they would revise that book and they would present it to the ulama of their time so that they could criticize it and advise them. Imam Ibn Majah, he, says, he said, I presented my book to Abu Zura. Abu Zura was one of the great scholars and muhaddithin. So he said, I think that if this book were to fall into the hands of the people, all of the jawami that have been written, all of the books which are references in sunnah, would no longer have any value because the people would value this book more. And then he says, Abu Zura adding to this, he says, perhaps in the whole of this collection of Sunnah Ibn, Ibn Majah, there are only 30 hadith in which the narration has weakness in it. This statement of Abu Zura needs some clarification. The book of Ibn Majah was also criticized by the scholars. And who better to clarify than Imam al Dhahabi? Imam al Dhahabi says, adding a footnote to this particular narration, he says that from amongst the things which lessened the status of this book, of the Sunnah of Ibn Majah, is the narrations which were spurious and the small amount of narrations which were fabricated. And then he says, and the statement of Abu Zura, he says that if this statement is true, that Abu Zura said this, then what he must mean by this is 30 narrations which are saqita. They are not even considered because they are so fabricated. He says, as for the number of narrations or ahadith that in themselves are not approved because they are weak, they are many. And he says, the number of narrations which are weak is weak and fabricated, all of them included, a thousand, uh, or just under a quarter of the book. al hafiz ibn Hajar, commenting on the statement of Imam al-Dhahabi, he says, his book, which collects the sunnah of the Prophet it is a good collection. It has many chapters. Those narrations, which are not well known, they, we haven't found them in other books. So he's collected things which are not, it's not so common. So what are they doing by, collect, by, by this? They are preserving those parts of the sunnah which other people weren't able to preserve. Imam al-Dhahabi says there are a number of narrations which are very weak. And he says that, I heard this statement of Imam al-Sirri or who, who was supposed to have said that every single narration that Imam ibn Majah narrated and he's the only one who narrated it, then more than likely it would be found to be weak or fabricated. Then Imam al Dhahabi comments on this statement. He says, he said, that's not the case. He says, my study of Ibn Majah, then I have found that this is not true. That whatever he came, that he, nobody else narrated before him was weak. This is not true, this statement. We want to say something about the special attention that was received by Ibn Majah, the book Sunnah Ibn Majah. And we find that the ulama gave this book quite a lot of importance. In our time, the Imam of the Sunnah of our time, Sheikh Muhammad Nasruddin Al Albani, he did a great service to this book by clarifying to the student of knowledge those are hadith which were authentic and those that were not authentic. This was a great service to this book, Sunnah Ibn Majah. And nowadays I think that you would be, I think that there is no scholar in the world who doesn't have those books of Sheikh Muhammad Nasruddin al-Albani on his shelf. But there were some scholars who made the study of this hadith, the meaning of those narrations or explanations of Sunnah Ibn Majah. And from amongst the famous ones, was the one by Al-Hafidh Alauddin Mughaltai, who died in the year 762. And also from amongst them, the book, Ma Tamusu Ilayl Haja Ala Sunni ibn, Maj, ibn Majah. And this was by Sirajuddin Umar ibn Ali ibn Mulaqin. Ibn Mulaqin was one of those people who was amazing. Alas, many of his books haven't come to print or they've been lost. But just to give you an idea of Ibn Mulaqin's works, he wrote an explanation of Sahih al-Bukhari. It was so magnificent 
that the explanation of Al Hafiz ibn Hajr was only a summary of what Ibn Mulaqin wrote. And in fact, some of the books of Ibn Mulaqin have come out now. Also, from amongst the people who made Inaya with the explanation of Sunnah ibn Majah is a book called Ad Dibaja fi Sharhi, Sunnah ibn Majah. And this was a book which was written by Kamaluddin Muhammad ibn Mursi at Dabiri in the year 808 Hijri. Also from amongst the people that made Inaya with this book, Misbah Zujaja fi Sharhi ibn Majah, which is well known to most of the people nowadays, which is the explanation of Al Hafiz Jalaluddin al Suyuti. And with that, he died in the year 911. And also, there was Sharh Sun ibn Majah by Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Hadi as Sindhi in the year 1138. So you can see that the scholars, they gave great attention to this book because of the status of this book. Ibn Majah has a very great status and hence it has been added to the Kutub al Sitta. We want to say something about the death of Ibn Majah. May Allah have mercy on him. So the great Imam lived for 64 years. And when he died, his brother Abu Bakr led his janazah. And Abu Bakr and Abdullah, two of his brothers, they were the people responsible for his burial. And his son Abdullah. And some of the scholars, they wrote something, said some poetry about his death. So he says that, the death of Ibn Majah has caused weakness in the throne of knowledge to the extent that the throne is shaky after the loss of Ibn Majah. And really you can't appreciate the work of Ibn Majah until you sit and you benefit from what he wrote. And the scholars, subhanAllah, you know, nowadays you find the scholars, they discuss and teach the works of Ibn Majah. Jazakumullah khairan for listening.